The first time I picked up a bat, um, I can remember, as far as I can remember, I was probably about three or four years old, maybe even younger, but I used to play cricket in my dad's bedroom. He would lie down on the bed because um, he didn't want to get up, but he would throw the ball at the corner and I'll be, in, I'll be batting in the corner of the room and I'll hit it and the dog would catch it and bring it back for him and then we'll, um, <laughs> we'll go again. We'd just go and play in the front yard with a tennis ball and, and a cricket bat and and my dad used to bring me here in the Oval, in the Jeffrey Sawmeyer stand. He used to sneak me in, actually, my aunt and himself, and she used to hold me behind her back and sneak me in the Sawmeyer stand. And, yeah, just make sure that I get in just to see Australia, England versus West Indies, whichever one it was. My favourite thing about cricket when I was younger was just being able to hit the ball as hard as I could. I didn't really know about technique or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to bat, and but that's pretty much it. I didn't want to do anything else. I was more a batsman and I actually took up wicket keeping because no one else wanted to do it when I got into secondary school. And that was actually the first time I played hardball cricket was in Form 1. Then when I got into St. Mary's College, um, quite a few people. Um, there was Aaron Kirbinali, uh, Dewan Balwant, Andre Lawrence uh, and David Furlong. All of them helped me quite a bit early on. Oh, what a response. What a good shot that is from Brian Lara. Uh, I looked up to, of course, Brian Lara, being from Trinidad, the Prince of Port of Spain, and, and both of us from Queen's Park Cricket Club. As a wicketkeeper, uh, Danish Ramden, and also a lot of like Adam Gilchrist, Brad Haddon, uh, was a big Australian fan growing up. My first first ass game in 2018, I could actually remember it like yesterday. I walk, walked out to bat. Uh, we, we went in second and my hands were shaking and the opposition with people was like, why are your hands shaking? I was like, well, this is my first game and I'm pretty nervous. And I remember Slugs we playing Shane Schillingford for four and then, yeah, the nerves were pretty much calm from then. Uh, in 2019, um, the Super 50, we called ourselves the ultimate rejects. We were all guys who didn't make our main franchise teams and we kind of all came together because uh, nobody made their team, so we, we call ourselves the ultimate rejects and, and it just so happened that we gelled really well from, from the beginning and we went on to win the, the title and it was actually a pretty good tournament for me. My first list day 100, um, that was my favourite moment of that tournament uh, against, oh my, against Wynwood Highlands. Um, yeah, I remember that in the Brian Lara Stadium, my dad was there and yeah, I got pretty emotional with that one. My first, first time I, I raised my bat, bat and helmet for, for, um, for West Indies in, a, in any form. The hardest thing that I had to learn was probably patience. Um, they have a lot better bowlers, a lot better everywhere. All around everybody's a lot better. So for me, I just had to kind of calm myself and, and try to play to my strengths and, and just have the ability to, to do what I know to do and what I train to do. My key ambitions were um, obviously to make West Indies, it happened a lot faster than I could have ever imagined but at, at that time I just wanted to play cricket and play cricket at that level because once I got there, I got a taste of it, I really wanted to, to excel and, and just do my best as, as quickly as possible and get to the top. CPL was, was pretty good, um, that, that, was, that was a Covid year, um, it was tough, we came, went from bubble to bubble but uh, being, being around like Chris Lynn, Ben Dunk and a few other overseas and just seeing them and how they operate in the franchise system. Um, it was a good first taste of it and, and yeah, I've definitely learned a lot from, from that experience. The best advice I probably got was keep it simple. That was the most important thing and ever since then I've tried my best to just not over, overthink the game because we, we like to overthink cricket and, and it makes it very difficult and yeah, it, it just complicates things. So that was probably the best advice I got. And my first call to West Indies uh, from Roger Harper, I can remember exactly what he said and yeah, a few tears came to my, my eyes and I went to my parents straight in their room and I was like, I made it as a reserve even, but I still made it somehow and got on the field um, just to, to catch a few balls. <laughs> I knew it was going to be long going to the airport, away from my family and everyone um, during COVID as well. We didn't know what to expect. Um, all I knew was a charter flight and luckily it was business class seats because that eight hours is never nice. Um, but yeah, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, that tour, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Um, they had a full game room, golf simulator, pool table, everything you could have asked for to make us comfortable. Um, the only thing was we were in a bubble, but um, for me, I was just really excited to be there and just be among the guys and be in the West Indies setup for the first time in the test, the test team, so uh, it was a really good experience. Mentally, I was just excited. I just wanted to get out there, I wanted to do my best and, and just be around the guys. Subbing in in the third test, uh, I, remember, I remember being on, on the balcony in Manchester and coach told me, um, Josh, you might have to go in. I was like, coach, I don't have my stuff on me. He's like, All right, where is it? In my room. So. Uh, I actually ran across the field, took off my shoes over there, which I had on my fielding spikes, ran to my room, put on my batting spikes, which are half spikes, 
and put on my keeping gear, ran on the field from the hotel end and then slipped because I didn't have on my full spikes. So I remember that very well. I was very nervous. Jason, when I came on the field, made it uh, pretty easy. I would say he took off my hat. I was wearing a floppy and he presented it to me. And, and yeah, that definitely helped me a great deal. And yeah, I did a pretty good job other than that one missed chance, but it was a good experience. My test debut, I remember it. Uh, Roger Harper gave me my cap number 322. Uh, yeah, I still couldn't believe it happened. At the time it did, it happened a lot quicker than I could have imagined and it, it couldn't have been a better debut. That's whipped away through the onsides. Yes, another familiar shot from this man, Joshua De Silva, who's played a super hand here. Yeah, my maiden test 100. Um, actually today, uh, we're feeling Coach Griff. He sent me a picture of me celebrating and that, and he says, this is the guy you want to see. And I think about it every day. I look back at the footage all the time. And for me, I would just like to get back to, to that feeling because there's no other feeling than scoring a test 100. Goes down the ground. He thinks he's got there. He certainly has. What an innings from Josh De Silva. The ecstasy written all over his face, and boy, he's deserved that. A lot of tears and to experience it with, with Jaden on the other end and, and to, to see what he did and what he's capable of. I was just, I was probably more proud than him, than myself. I told him that half of that 100 is his own. Um, just to see what he did and how he helped, helped me get it. Uh, I can never thank him enough. And yeah, as everyone saw, the emotions were running. My parents were really proud. Um, I'm pretty sure they cried their tears more than me. Um, I didn't think they had, they had any more if they wanted to. Um, but yeah, as I called them in the night, they, pretty excited and they didn't have much words, much less me. Captaining the A-team uh, in Bangladesh, not a very easy place to tour, but um, the opportunity was second to none. It taught me a lot. Um, the, the pressures of being captain definitely shows when you reach a, a higher level. I think I have pretty good qualities of leadership. Um, I think I'm there for the boys and I, I just want to make sure we, the boys get what they need in order to go out there and perform to the best of their ability. I'll give everything for them and that's most important. The quality Joshua has that make him a good player is it's his fighting spirit. That never said die, you know, the warrior like, you know. Um, and the feel I think for me he's not as talented as most of the players around, but he have that fighting spirit, that warrior spirit about him. So sometimes you're not you're not gonna be as talented as everyone, but at least if you have that fight, this cricket requires that fight, international cricket. Playing at home, uh, it's been a dream come true. We were supposed to have one against South Africa um, in 2021, I believe, but it never happened because of COVID. Um, but now, the 100th Test match between India and West Indies, to be at my home ground and, and to get this opportunity, uh, I, I don't have words to explain it. That's pretty much all I have. From being smuggled in into the Stormire stand to actually being there singing rally around the West Indies and then being out there with West Indies in the Queen's Park Oval, um, it's definitely going to be a special moment and to have my parents there and the stands watching, can't ask for anything better. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be looking for them every ball. Every time I catch a ball, I'm going to be looking around where they are. I'll spot them once and then probably not stop looking at them. It'll be really a special, special moment. I'd love to captain West Indies in the future. Obviously, Craig is doing a fantastic job and I'm just there to, to support him whenever he needs. Um, Jermaine as the vice captain, so I'll wait my turn and hopefully in the future that opportunity presents itself. My main goals are just to to be the best cricketer I can be, on and off the field, do the right things, do the basics well, and support my teammates as, as, as great as I could. The future is in his hands. He's been playing for West Indies now for two, three years. Um, he's been fast track, A-team captain. His performance, you know, his stability, his awareness and so forth, and the, on and off the field management, he's on the right path. The dream next few years probably get the average above 40. Uh, score as many test hundreds as I can, get into the ODI team. Um, yeah, just just play cricket. Once I'm playing cricket, I'm very happy. So once I'm enjoying it, I'm loving, I'm loving what I'm doing.